running for Young Democrats Mississippi president, be warned. Both Kent and I were much smaller than this before we were elected president. <laughs> it is one of the most, one of the, the Young Democrats have a very liberal policy on what it considers young. I'm 32 and I'm still considered young, thank you. But I can remember when I first got involved, I was 15. In fact, this is my eighth Young Democrats of Mississippi convention to attend. And this is the first one in 15 years that I have not helped to organize. And I got to tell you, it's a little surreal, but, uh, but not displeasing. The, uh, but I can remember coming to a meeting and seeing some folk and asking how old they were, and I found out that you could be a young Democrat up to the age of 35. And I just got indignant about that. I said, you can't. 35 years old aren't young anymore, they're damn near 40. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a little older, and I really loved the organization because we, we traveled a lot out of the state back then. We go all over the country. I really love meeting people around the country. And I, I, but when I got, but at the beginning, I said she cut off at 25, just 25. And I turned 25. And I thought, well, maybe we should go through 30. And I turned 30, and I, and I, and I began to think more than ever that this organization maybe should cut off somewhere around 25 years old. Uh, <laughs> But if there is something that those of you who are the younger members find in some of those of us who are the older members, I hope it is what Kenneth has been so, has done so well and so masterfully, and that is that you see us as mentors, but also friends, people who you can call on. Everybody else tells you to crawl before you walk. Every once in a while you need somebody to say, go ahead and run. And if you trip, don't worry. We'll catch you. Just do what you want to do. If you've got a good idea, you've got some passion behind it, Maybe I don't agree with it. Maybe I don't understand it. But maybe you'll make it work. So do it. And if it doesn't go, if it doesn't go quite right, don't worry about it. You've got friends who will protect you. Friends who will be there to pick you up. But I, uh, I got my start as a high school young Democrats president. But I'm so pleased to see, I believe this is the University of Southern Mississippi, right here, my alma mater is here. That was where I really fell in love with college Democrats, uh, was during the uh, 1999 when Ronnie Musgrove was running for governor. And we, uh, uh, I'm so embarrassed I have forgotten the name of the hall now. Uh, but we had to move our meetings into, the, into, into one of the larger auditoriums because we were having about 150 people show up to every meeting. And we were meeting twice a week. So it was just, it was a great time, it was a fun time. But I can tell you, no matter what kind of chapter you're in now, whether you're in a high school, or whether you're in a college, or whether you're in a county, I have no doubt that a big part of your discussion is how can we make the organization bigger? How can we make it give more people into it? Let me get you to change how you ask that question a little bit. Stop thinking how can you make the organization bigger? Start thinking how can you make your organization better? Because if you've got 25 dynamic people who will get involved and elect a Democrat or a Republican almost won, it really doesn't matter that it's 25 as opposed to 100. Because if you don't get me wrong, you want your organization to be as big as you can, but you will find that it will grow over time as they see good people and strong people making something happen. I want to give you an example of where, uh, well, I, let me say this, if you remember nothing else that I say, remember this, find a hole and fill it. Find a gap and fill it. That is where you can be, that is where you, at a young age, unexperienced, probably with no money or not enough to, to, to make a difference in, in the political world. That's where you can make a difference because in every campaign, in every county executive committee, in every state Democratic Party function, no matter what it is, there are holes, there are gaps in which, there is no, in which they cannot afford staff to do and they need people to come in and fill that gap. And it's when you do that, on the front end, before you ask for something, before you want something, that's where you can make a difference. I want to give Kate Jacobson, the Vice President, I want to show you how something she participated in had seismic consequences uh, over the state. For years, there had not been a strong connection between our state party and the leadership in our legislature. And in large part, that was because our legislature was divided not so much down party lines, but it was down racial lines. And when four years ago, I guess four and a half years ago, 
Billy McCoy was elected Speaker of the House, there was a shift because now it was he was he was he was ideologically a Democrat, he was passionately a Democrat, and he was trying to build a Democratic coalition in the House, a biracial uh, coalition in the House, something that never existed before. But there was no communication between the party and the House leadership still. There was no habit of being in communication with them. Legislation was being passed, and the party was completely absent from the process. Well, when I was at Democrats Mississippi President, Kim was Vice President, he and I got together and we decided we wanted to, to olive branch to the legislature. And we hired two interns, of which Kate Jackson was one. She was at Millsaps College at the time. And she went to work in the Mississippi legislature. And she became so much a part of that body that she was in meetings that she really, in, in many ways, shouldn't have been a part of. I can, I can tell you one that stands out in my mind. Kenneth mentioned that, that I'm the speaker's political director and I direct his PAC, VPAC, which is the House Caucus's Political Action Committee. When Kate went to work there, that political action committee was nothing but a bank account. But she had built up such a good reputation that when there when an incumbent Democrat left the legislature to become a judge and there was an open seat, I had been able to build a relationship with the legislature to bridge off what they were doing as interns. I was close enough to the speaker to ask him if he wanted me to go down to the district and look around. There were seven or eight candidates at that time, I forget. Sean Wally, who was eventually elected, was someone who, who stood out as a true Democrat, not a pretend Democrat, and someone who could win. So the speaker had a meeting in the pro tem's office, the speaker pro tem's office, there at the Capitol building. And there were about seven legislators, the speaker, and they were discussing how much money they were going to send. Very few legislators even knew this meeting was taking place. Of the ones who did, most of them weren't allowed to come into it. I mean, it was the Speaker Pro Tem, it was the Chair of Ways and Means, the Chair of Appropriations, myself, um, one or two other high-ranking members, and Kate Jacobson, uh, who it, it's taking notes. And it, and it made perfect sense. If the Chair of Transportation wanted him, well, he can't come in right now. But Kate Jacobson has to, we can't start until Kate gets here. Now, what happened, we won that legislative seat. That led to the speaker increasing the, the idea of this political action committee. And eventually, it would lead to the fact that for the first time in 30 years last November, Democrats had no net losses in the House. Three Republican seats, including one in Pascagoula that was thought impossible for a Democrat to win, we won. And I can tell you that, on, on, and we won in seats that the barber took big time. And in a, and in a year where, in a year where the, where the uh, Republicans just seemed to take everything, it was one of the, it, our race and the Attorney General races were the only two big Democratic wins. And if you, just, just so you'll know how big it was, the Speaker of the House, the only true Democrat that's ever been Speaker of the House, the only left of center man to ever hold this position of Speaker of the House, was reelected by one vote in the House of Representatives. And I can tell you without any doubt, and I have said this publicly, and I'd say it to the press, that happened, would not have happened if it had not been for Young Democrats, if it had not been for Kate Jacobson and Demetri Biggs and the work that they did. You have no idea how something small, simply finding a need and filling it, how it can, cha how it can change, uh, change, it has changed our state's history already with, with the Speaker's re-election.